In this video, I will be providing you with a little more information about blocking and bridging and when you might choose to add it to an existing floor to help with bouncing or sagging. And you need to understand that these simple techniques can indeed improve floor stability, but it's also crucial to understand their limitations, especially in older structures. Basically, what the blocking and bridging do is create a lateral connection between your floor joist. And this seemingly simple addition offers three key benefits. Number one, increased stiffness. By connecting the joist laterally, blocking and bridging distribute weight more evenly across the floor framing system. This reduces individual joist deflection, or bending and effectively minimizing that bouncy feeling. And this one definitely works well in new construction. Number two, preventing joist rotation. This would basically reduce or eliminate the amount of twisting or rotating under a load. Another common cause of instability and that often irritating noise of a squeaking floor. Number three, improved load distribution. When a heavy load is placed on one joist, blocking and bridging often help transfer that load to adjacent joist, creating a more stable and balanced floor. So what does all this mean? Basically, by blocking or adding bridging to an existing floor, you're going to stiffen it up. There's no doubt about that. However, I don't know if it's going to prevent it from bouncing anymore or from sagging. And to address these issues, we're gonna to have to take a look at four more things. Number one on the list and the most common problem you're going to have when dealing with sagging floors or any other issue you're going to have with a floor is usually going to have something to do with number one on our list and that's going to be undersized joist. Number two will be foundation settlement causing uneven supports. Number three on the list will be damage from moisture or pests like termites that often weaken the wood. And number four might have something to do with the structural beams that are supporting some of these floor joist loads. Another thing you need to consider is just how badly damaged are these boards and will you even be able to add bridging or blocking to them in the first place. And I think for those of you who have a slight bounce in the floor and it is not sagging and the foundation isn't damaged and you're not dealing with termites or moisture issues like wood fungus, then I would definitely try adding the blocks or the bridging. And if you can't make your mind up on whether or not to add the blocks or bridging, after watching this video, then maybe consider this. Installing a row of blocks usually isn't going to cost a lot of money. And in my opinion, you'll actually be strengthening the floor. So why not try it? And if it doesn't work, you're not going to be out very much money. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area.